Hi, hello, welcome to my podcast. Let's talk agriculture. Yes, yeah, so hey. before I continue, yeah, so today is my birthday and I feel so, so good about it. <laughs> wow, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sharon. Happy Thank birthday. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, moving yes. forward. Yes, amen. Amen. So today I have with me Aki Alabi, the co founder of Corporate Farmers International. He holds a master's degree in business administration and a BSc accounting from Olabc Onabanjo University, Ogun State. He is also a graduate of Orange Academy, a brand and advertising school in Maryland, Lagos. Aki Alabi's passion for agriculture started over 20 years ago when he created a dynamic way of how youth can begin to see agriculture differently using the power of digitalization from creating an award-winning blog called the Corporate Farmers Blog, which is now transformed into a multi-million naira company called the Corporate Farmers International, with its co-founders, directors, partners, and stakeholders across Nigeria. Yeah, there's so much to say about Mr. Akialabi, and if I want to really do that, <laughs> yeah. Trust me, we are not going to move. We are not going to move. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know if you have something to say to our listeners today before we proceed. Uh, okay, I want to say thank you for having me once again, Sharon. I appreciate and uh, thank you for what you do in the agri space. Uh, I've been personally following your works for a while now, and I see that you're doing greatly well you know uh, using the power of the technology to drive agriculture and also to share success stories of those who are doing amazing the well in the ecosystem so beautiful thank you for having me once again and i feel uh, i'm gonna have a very good time with you so thank you once again and to our listeners welcome and i hope you learn a little bit from my own small bits you know thank you mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Aki. I'm very, very grateful to have you here. Okay, so let's just move straight up. Um, so, can you tell us briefly about um, your take on digital agriculture? I mean, I saw that you wrote a book on digital agriculture. So, what really inspired you to, to write a book? I mean, that's a whole lot. That's something... <laughs> that is so amazing and I'm looking forward to it myself so what can you okay. really say about it okay uh, let me start like this um, the book is um, is a project that I personally have been working on for since five years ago uh, because yeah five years ago is a five years project actually that we just birthed uh, this year so the the major reason why I wrote the book was because five years ago, I knew I had the instinct that there's going to be a time in the agri sector, or uh, let's say a shift, let me use the word shift now, in the agri sector, whereby the entire language will be more of technology, digitalization, and also youth involvement in agriculture. So. The questions that have been in the lips of people, you know, then was like, okay, if you're going to have a shift in the whole ecosystem, who are those that are going to transform or make that shift happen? Basically, they are the new generation or the youth, which personally I call the new agricultural talent or, yeah, the new agricultural talent that are going to turn the shift around and cause a dynamic change or a disruption in the entire agricultural ecosystem. And, uh, I can see clearly that that has begun to happen. Even uh, when last year uh, the COVID pandemic struck the world, it was obvious that, look, it's high time that we need to start doing things differently and also start doing agriculture differently. And also give a space for technology to start thriving, you know. And um, that, that was, to me, is really, really quite huge and quite, quite impressive because 
uh, a work that you've been working on, you've been on for the past five years, and you knew that there'll be a time that this is where the world is shifting to. And you see that the way things are done now are basically through technology, through digitalization, and also through a means whereby tools, whereby you can make things easy, you can make communication easier, you can make um, farming simple or agri business simple. So those are the things that led me to write the book about five years ago. And I thank God that it's actually coming at the right time. Uh, we're launching at the right time and launching at the point whereby the global global language, you know, basically the agri ecosystem is all about technology, digitalization, and also changing the narrative. And um, it's quite exciting for me. And I thank God that, you know, ever since we released the book, you know, uh, the, the massive um, uh, acceptability we've been getting has been quite awesome, uh, both locally and internationally. It has been quite great. And uh, I knew that, yes, it's high time that we start changing the narrative and also help our young agropreneurs and youth begin to see agriculture in a different perspective that would help, you know, to, to further uh, develop the ecosystem and also help uh, advance or bring in new generations or new young talents to see and do agriculture differently. So those are basically the things that has led me to write the book. And I thank God that at least um, ever since we released it, it's been quite impressive. So th those are my passion and that's, that's one of the reasons why those books were, were written and five years ago. And now that it's materialized, that is that's a good one for, for the entire agri sector. Thank you. It is actually a very good one. It is actually. And when I saw the book, I was I was really, really so impressed. I was like, oh my God, this is actually great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I I hope that you should be able to um, make it uh, what's the is it like a form of an ebook or something that someone can easily download? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a plan in a couple of years. In, let's say in, before end of the year, we're going to have it as an ebook, you know. But um, currently now we have a website uh, for, for the book. But so by end of the year, uh, my team and I are looking towards having an ebook so you can actually have international uh, participate, international students, both in foreign countries, be able to download the book, read, and also get knowledge of what we are doing in Nigeria and Africa, and also how technology has been help, helpful to change the narrative uh, in the sector. So, yeah, before end of the year, we should have it in ebook, definitely, for sure. Yeah, that would, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I, no I think I have to go and read that book right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm thinking this old um, digital agriculture and, and then the rural farmers, yeah, mm. that's, that's something I'm always thinking about, yeah. Well, how do you think okay. we can get rural farmers involved in digital agriculture? Like, yeah. what are the approaches to follow? Yeah, exactly. That's that been a question people have been buzzing me with, you know, in a couple of days. You know, asking that, look, how, how can a farmer in probably Kotangora in Niger State or a typical farmer somewhere in Kaduna, you know, or a village in, in, in somewhere, you know, that is doing all his best to cultivate? How can it be, how can it be a part? of digitalization. Now it's simple. The reason why I say it's simple is this. Everybody today, you know, has a mobile phone, has a mobile device, you know, regardless if it's um, an Android or if it's uh, uh, the, the regular, I don't know what to call it now, but the regular phones, which is not Android, non-Android phones. Now, everybody has a phone device. That is definitely number one factor. And every phone device has a network associated with it. You know, either MTN, either or either of the network facilities, network providers. Sorry, you know, it's, it's available on individual phones to make calls and all that. That is a tool on its own. That is a tool on its own. Now, I'm going to give you a typical example. A uh, couple of years back, when the current um, President of AFDB, that accumulation was the Minister of Agriculture. Yeah. Years back, during uh, former President Jonathan's era, um, he did something innovative. You know, because what he did that time, people were like shocked that what was he actually doing. Now, very huge um, issues in fertilizer distributions among local farmers. 
very huge issues in terms of um, let me use the word corruptions, uh, but it's not but I get into the, the right people. You know, so many things were around it. So what they did then, they used the power of digitalization to share fertilizers among local farmers in each state, in different local governments, and in every ward amongst the country. And that was quite impressive. Now, what did they do? This is what they did. Now, they bought small phones, non-Android phones, very small phones they could get for probably 1,000, 2,000 naira, you know, to local farmers across the states. Now, they use this as a means of communication to these farmers with a particular SIM card, you know, with all this mobile network, which any of the mobile network. Now, what they did was simple. The strategy they adopted was, at every point in time, federal government wanted to share fertilizer or inputs to local farmers. They would send information to that mobile device, like a text message or an SMS to that mobile device in all languages, both Aosa, Igbo, and Yoruba. So that when you see that information as a local farmer, you know the exact location where you need to go, the place you need to go, the time you need to go, when you need to go, the venue you need to go to to pick up your input that has been supplied for you. That process alone has helped reduce several things, majorly challenges in fertilizer distributions in local farming, in, in the agricultural sector. Now, what I did there was to adopt a technology tool and the power of digitalization to help solve the problem. So that is a particular means in which in which digitalization has helped has helped to to trans has helped to uh, reach out or had value to every local farmer out there. Now let's take it to our own world where we, we have the iOS, we have the Androids, we have the all sorts, Java and, and the likes. Now we have several technology apps and platforms that, that is currently helping solve, that is currently helping us to solve uh, challenges, issues uh, within the agriculture system. For example, we have thousands of e-commerce platforms today that is linking buyers and sellers together. We have platforms that is helping us to determine weather, uh, weather conditions, you know, when it's going to rain, the number of rain you need on a particular commodity, uh, the type, the, 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 the level of rain you need on a particular commodity at the, plant, at the point of planting is there. We have we have uh, applications that is helping us to check the nutrient of soil before you go before you plant. You know we have uh, technology that is helping us to determine uh, the harshness of the weather, whether it's good for a particular crops or not, to determine your number of harvests they're going to have in a year. You know these things are there. The, you know, for, now let me take you further again. Um, I'm sure you maybe you've heard of Hello Tractor, whereby they'll be able to transform or make use of the power of um, rent using technology, using um, what's it called now, mechanization. You know, easy for farmers. So you don't need to even buy a tractor or own a tractor. You can definitely just rent from that platform, yes. uh, yeah, exactly, and come to your farm. I make it easy for you. I make it easy, easy for you to do all land preparation, planting, harvesting, and the likes. Now, these are what digitalization has brought to the table. And without it, it's going to make our work more tedious because um, technology has made work simple and easy, you know, for, for us to adopt. So it doesn't leave anybody out, regardless of whether you are skilled or unskilled, whether you are certified or not certified, whether you go to school or not. So far, you're able to learn and use effectively definitely you should be able to uh make use of it and uh, help increase in productivity you know because uh, from the from the illustration i gave, gave earlier farmers that were involved in those programs doing addition additional areas means that they really they really had good results and um, it was very helpful for them you know it made it easier for them to get their input on time plant on time you know without spending so much you know to get input and all that. So those are tools that I believe that today, if we begin to adopt, it's going to help us increase our productivity on a faster rate. Look at other African countries. I always use uh, likes of Kenya, you know, as 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 an example. Kenya has gone far ahead of Nigeria in terms of adopting technology, you know, developing policies that would help grow the agri agri tech platform. You know, in terms of the, in terms of digitalization, policies that have been made to help farmers to grow fast, to move fast across all value chain. 
and across um, across all types of agribusiness, be it livestock, be it um, uh, poultry, be it of uh, aqua fish and all that. So so it it doesn't it doesn't debar you from any of the value chain. Any value chain can actually begin to adopt technology and digitalization. And I believe that Nigeria has got to the point where we need to start seeing things differently and start working differently, adopting technology that would help us increase productivity. And I believe that with, with the book, Rise into Agriculture, it will open our eyes to see more and now begin to do more, to earn more and produce more within the agricultural ecosystem. So, um, yeah, thank you, Sharon. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really love that method you used and I'm definitely going to adopt it. <laughs> Given the, the phones to farmers and yeah. passing up um, information across, that's yeah. actually an amazing approach. and. Yeah, I think if a whole lot of um, states could um, adopt that method, I think we'll do a whole lot in the agri sector. Exactly. That's actually an amazing thing. Oh, I never thought about this. Oh my God. Thank <laughs> you very much for sharing this to me. You're welcome. I'm definitely <laughs> adopting this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for really breaking things down. Yeah, I really, I really, really understand and it's really just it, 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 it's entered like it, and you know when you eat food and then you take a very chilled cook uh, and it's digest <laughs> by the way thank you yeah. thank you that's great that's thank you that's just what you did I'm honored yeah, thank you very much I, 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 I'm happy you decided to be on the show with me no problem anytime and it's really been an amazing 17 minutes yeah <laughs> Is that, thank you anytime anyway. anytime Thank you very, very much. Uh, I hope you'll be able to push out the book, The Rise of Digital Agriculture, to a whole different... Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. So I've been planning... Yeah, we're planning for Kenya launch sometimes in April. Uh, yeah, April. We're looking for to launch officially in Kenya too in April uh, so that we could get it across all African states. We're, we're, our target is basically to have it in five different countries, in five different countries in Africa by the end of the year. So we started with Nigeria, we're looking at Kenya next, they are looking at Uganda, Ghana, South Africa, and Rwanda. So we're looking at those countries by end of end of the year. By God's grace, we'll get there. And with the team we have on ground, definitely we're gonna get there. Mm, that's that's very amazing. That's very amazing. I'm looking forward to it myself. No problem. I'm looking forward to it. No problem. Don't worry. Uh maybe maybe once we sort out the, our delivery, I will send you uh, a complimentary copy for me personally signed by me to you. Yay! Thank <laughs> you very much. No. I'll be expecting it. Thank no you very much. No problem. Thank you very much for coming here to discuss digital agriculture. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. I'm most welcome. Bringing you out of your office by 11. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. So, my listeners, we've come to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening and see you on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. <laughs> anyway, uh, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>